Tell, tell me about your favorite thing about Joe Staponzi. Uh, that he burns motherboards. Hey guys, so side channel video for this, but uh, I'm joined by Kingpin. Vince is the real name. Yeah. And oh, this is not a hardware video. <clears throat> so this is this is Vince's bike, and it's actually really sweet. I wanted to show it off. So let's let's do a bike check, I guess. Sure, no problem. What did how did this start? What was the what was the frame, I guess, originally? Uh, well, I was pedaling to work all the time, and um, the tra know. traffic here is just hideous, man. You've seen it, right? Yeah. So I'm always getting owned in traffic, no respect. So I wanted something a little bit faster and uh, I started doing a little bit of research about e-bikes and I actually bought my wife one. Um, she, she rolls around on it, does like her errands and stuff. Um, and then I got the idea to get one. So that's, this is, it's just, this is like, it's not really custom built, but it's more like, more like custom modified. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's uh, let's let's hit the the, the key specs first. You said okay. 115 kph or so max speed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right so now is that about 110, 115. Uh, that's around 65, 70 miles an hour. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's out of the box. Okay. It's got a uh, it's got a V3 3000 watt hub motor okay. on the back. That's a lot of watts. Yep. Uh, 72 volts. It's got a 100 amp 72 volt controller. Um, right here underneath the battery yeah and 72 volt battery uh it it's actually capable of 8,000 watts peak power though which is nice it's yeah a lot of you, torque yeah i was gonna say so torque we were, we were talking about earlier uh i mean is it when you throttle it how, how <laughs> hard does it pull you back it's crazy you got you got to hold on really tight man or else it'll 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 whiplash you off for sure you replace the brakes right yep uh, I modified the brakes because those, the, you saw those Tektro brakes yeah, that were on here. Sucks. So it yeah. kind of came as a set, right? It's like, um, I originally wanted to get a stealth bike, but it's very hard to get it imported here and the duties are really high. So I thought, you know what? I can build a, a custom bike with better components, right? Yeah. Cause the, yeah. the stealth actually comes with some, some, some low grade components too. Same. Um, so you replace the Tektros with Hope. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, these are Hope Tech, uh, I have some hope parts on my bike, actually. Yeah, these are V4s. They're very, very nice, man. Do you know if they're, are they like quad piston or what? Yeah, these are quad piston. These are quad piston, okay. It's got Hope Tech rotors on it. Are the, do you know the rotor size? I uh, believe it's... Like 203, maybe? Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are... Whoa, I'm pretty sure these are 203. Yeah, these are 203. I guess that's a good transition. They had one higher size, but uh, I would have had troubles fitting the calipers. Yeah, no, 203. 203 is what I run for, like for downhill and that's enough stopping yeah power it's good everything yeah but this thing's heavy you know it's about it's heavy it's also faster than yeah a, a non-electric bike with the battery it's about 48 48 uh kilogram okay mm. yeah so it's pretty heavy yeah yeah what's the um so we were plugged in over here is this a charger that comes with the bike yeah, it okay. came with the battery. Okay. It's, it came like a set. I got I got the battery. It's literally just a power supply. Like I got yeah, I got the hub motor and I got the charger and the display and the controller, yeah. Okay. And the rest I put together. So, uh, let's talk. I guess let's talk about this computer on the front. Okay. How, how do we turn that on? This is fully programmable. It's very nice actually. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, I was skeptical at first, right? I just wasn't sure. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So the it's got five speeds. Uh, this one is ridiculous, as you'll find out when you ride it. Um, it's got if it's power. not raining. Anyway. Yeah, if it's not raining, uh, it shows you like the power output real time. Uh, it's got a uh, trip meter. It has an odometer. It shows you miles per hour. Yeah, it's fully programmable. You can change like different settings on the controller, like max power. Oh, you got battery meter too. Yep. Tells you when the battery's have, out. Did you say it has a GPS or no? No, it doesn't okay. have GPS, okay. but it has an alarm. And the alarm has a motor lock. So if the alarm gets tripped, mm. the, the hub motor will actually lock. It won't okay. spin. So the only way you're, you're moving it is you, you pick it you're up. You're picking it up yeah, if you want right. to steal it. And this right. is heavy, man. It's not easy. <laughs> um, so you got shifters here. Yep. Your shifter. And then what is... Was this just the on for the bike? Yeah, it's just power switch. switch. Okay. Yeah, that's it. What is that switch below it's it? It's very simple. Oh, light. Oh, headlight. okay, cool. Yeah, it's got a headlight and got a rear a light. Headlamp on it. You need it. I need it at night, man. Or some, somebody will rear end me. Yeah. Have you had any close calls? 
think everyone, everyone who's ridden a bike. Many, close, dude. Close call, on this right? thing, man, I've had hundreds of close calls. Every day I ride it is a close call. <laughs> Um, and uh, the scooters don't don't really like it. They see me on the road with this and yeah, I guess going I should, way faster than maybe, them, and maybe they don't I like it. Explain the traffic situation a little bit. So uh, we never talk about this, obviously on GN because like totally irrelevant. But Taipei is uh, a lot different from the U.S. for how how the roads work. Like uh, it's a lot of scooters mostly. So that's, yep. that's number one. It's it's primarily scooters, and then. Uh, you get taxis too, of course, but also just a lot of people in a in a you know densely populated area. Very. So getting around, I would imagine, on this is a hell of a lot faster than. Oh yeah, I mean, you can go else. you can go in between the lanes of traffic. I don't have to get stuck in traffic. It's, right. This is really nice, man. It's very very convenient. What about I, the suspension setup? <clears throat> I changed the front fork and okay. I changed the uh, rear suspension too. On the front, I have the Manitou Dorado mm -hmm. Pro. Now the Pro has like, Pro's a little bit nicer than the Expert. It has a little more detailed machine work on the crowns and uh, on the fork. And it's actually lighter because they take more material off the fork. Okay. So I would, with this bike, man, my whole goal is to try to get it as light as possible. It's an air sprain, I guess? Yeah. Air sprain fork? Yeah. And you said you run it pretty stiff, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's street, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want too much travel. Um, the, the rear shock is the Cane Creek double barrel coil. And uh, I had a custom titanium spring made. Okay. This is 650 pound spring, dude. Oh man. You need it or else there's too much sag, right? Yeah, yeah. I tried with like a 500 and a 550. Do you know how much sag you, you sit at when you're riding? Like I have, a, there's a lot of preload on that. Okay. I, I really have a lot of preload okay. dialed in. It, it's pretty much perfect for me. As, have, long, as long as I don't gain, gain too much weight, it's like <laughs> perfect for me right now. Yeah, that's the biggest challenge with shock setup. Yep. I found that when I first first installed it, man. I had to change the springs a few times. Yeah. And but now it's it's nice. I like the so I like coilovers. I, for this, it makes a lot of sense because it's heavy too. But I like yeah. coilovers because you get a lot more, um, uh, like better compensation on definitely on a lot of like roots and rocks and stuff. For a bike like this, air shock's really out of the question. I think. Yeah. It, yeah, it need, yeah. needs a coil shock. You blow through the travel on on stuff like a curb. Definitely. And I, I put pro taper bars on it and that, that's about it. I like it. the bars a lot, actually. Yeah, that they're color. cool. They were really wide, actually, when I got them. They were like out to here, man. And we, we cut them down because it was going in between the cars. I realized it, yeah. was, it could clip the mirrors a lot easier. So I brought them in. A lot of in. the downhill bars are, are like 800 mil now. They're like 700 yeah, or 800. Yeah, big, right? Yeah. Well, it gives you more stability on the right. bike. I understand. But the worst you're dealing with is at a downhill park that they cut the trails for those bikes yeah. yeah you're dealing with traffic so it's a bit different and it's tight like really i, I noticed that you know i was like avoiding a lot of rear view mirrors and stuff and i was like maybe i should cut the bars down a little so as for how it works it's just like motorcycle throttle style yeah it's just okay. just 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 it's got a twist throttle on it uh, it actually has pedal assist as well but i cut it because i was always breaking the chain like i told you yeah um yes chain rain and no chain the, the, because this doesn't have, the, because the, the dropouts on the back don't go straight out, um, like like when you when people who run fixies or single speed bikes, yeah. you have to have the dropouts go out, right, right on the right. back. So you can keep the right tension on the chain, yeah. but the dropouts go down. So oh, okay. it's a little more difficult to- Keep the chain um, on there. Yeah, and I, I, I had a few different derailleurs. I, I had this really, really sweet one I got from Germany and this is this is a really really high quality quality derailleur and i just i busted it and i busted the yeah. chain when i bought when i bottomed the bike out i think it's just uh when it hit the ground or something it just bought this it bottomed out so hard oh, okay. oh there's the alarm that's the alarm <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that the, for me that's why i don't run the chain anymore and i don't need it you know the if i see a cop and i just fake pedal you know like yeah and they're, they're like slow down a little bit and it's okay <laughs> and then you have a rear light i guess here yep uh this is just like a little clip in light cell royale seat so what is it have you ever opened this up the case yeah it, the battery's inside of there okay. I, I had it all apart so like a few a weeks huge, ago huge when i battery in there I yeah guess. gigantic battery man what's the run time like if you're like if you're not flat out if you're just kind of uh, commuting i think it's about an 85 to 90 kilometer range that's Which is bad. pretty good, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but if I'm all, if I ride it hard out, 
like on the river where I want to take you. Yeah, um, if, it, if it's not wet. Yeah. There's actually a stretch where I can almost ride it for about 10 minutes nonstop hard out. And of course, it's going to battery will deplete a lot faster right, in that situation. Right, right. Gets Maybe last two, three hours like that. So do they do any like intake to cool the battery or just doesn't uh, even matter? It doesn't really get too hot. The controller okay. will get hot. And I'm pretty sure that's why they have those fins. Yeah. In that cover that protects it. Yeah, it's like a heat sink. Yeah. Th uh, this frame is okay, man. Um, I, I, I beat the hell out of this frame and it's all the welds and stuff are holding up. But I, I really want a carbon fiber frame. And yeah. there's, there's this company, uh, I think it's NYX, makes these really nice carbon fiber frames. And I'm thinking about changing it soon. I switched to carbon for my uh, trail bike recently. Yeah. And everything, so way lighter, obviously, which is a big advantage. You can mm. throw it around a little more. Um, downside is when carbon fails, it's normally like pretty catastrophic failure. Yeah, so you have to be, you know, you have to be kind of careful about it. Also, if you like drop it on a, like lay down the bike on something sharp, you know, at a, a high speed impact, yeah. it'll just shatter. Shatter. Like, yeah. Hmm. I can save a lot of weight by putting carbon. Oh yeah, this is heavy. Um, the tires, so you're running slicks, but you said they're fairly grippy on the streets. Yeah, these are 24, 24 by two, set, two five Maxi's hookworms. They don't even make these anymore, man. I have to get them on eBay man. whenever they pop up. Yeah. Um, but these tires are incredible. It's like... Oh, DMR vaults for the pedals, too. I've ridden, yeah. I've ridden those in the past. These, That's these, a downhill pedal. Dude, these pedals are... I mean, they're, I, I had to have something with big teeth on it. Yeah. Because you don't want to be slipping off the pedals when yeah, you're riding yeah. this. Yeah. But these pedals are ferocious, man. Like, they eat your ankles yeah, and, and your I legs have, up. I have scars Same. on my shin Up and pedals. down. Yeah. <laughs> my wife, the other day, she walked by the bike and... It, it caught her. Yeah. She wasn't happy, man. No, it'll cut you even if you're just pushing it up a hill or something. Yeah. Got to be careful of those pedals. Man. Sweet. Well, um, anything else you want to point out or should we see? No, if it's, it's, that's it, man. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty basic. There's really not much to these. I mean, the basics of every e-bike is the controller, the battery and the motor. Right. Some have mid drive, you know, and some have rear and some have front. Mm. I've seen front and rear hub motor on the same bike for extra power. Okay, so we're going to see if it's raining out, and if it's not, go give it a try. Cool. Uh, and if it is, then you'll have to check back for the next time we're in Taipei, and I'll try it then. But thanks for giving us the walkthrough. Sure, man. Let's, let's hopefully go try it out. So just a quick safety note before anyone gets the wrong idea. These things are fast. If you are thinking about getting one, be uh, mindful of pedestrians or people around you. Ideally, you ride it mostly on the street. That's where Kingpin mostly rides. Uh, we did take it out to this area, but uh, it's a biking path, and when there were people nearby, pedestrians or other uh, cyclists, we kept it under 20 miles per hour, which is completely, I mean, I could pedal faster than that. And then uh, when no one was around, we opened it up a bit, but there was a cop looking at us from a bridge above the entire time. So we couldn't go too crazy. But I, I did just want to point out that if anybody's watching this and is like, man, I need one of these, uh, remember that these are not common and laws and regulations aren't fully developed everywhere yet. So don't ruin it for everybody. Be safe and you know, be mindful of pedestrians or other cyclists. Don't go too fast near them. Uh, and also keep in mind that Vince is in Taiwan and the traffic situation there is completely insane. So on the road, He's uh, he's not that much different than the pe all the all the people on scooters, and there's a lot of those in Taiwan. So anyway, keep in mind that traffic situations are different all around the world, and where he is, this is a very reasonable thing to ride. And in the U.S., well, you know, it'll it'll depend. So this is where Vince took us to ride the bike. It was along the river, and we didn't go flat out on it or anything like that, but just tested it out at reasonable speeds. And uh, for this one, it, it was genuinely. Uh, a bit scary to start out on. So the bike does have a lot of kick once you get past the first or the second. They're not really gears, uh, they're power levels. So at the first power level of five, it it's really slow. You could pedal way faster than it. You could get a start way faster than it. Uh, once you get up to like two, that's where Tin was able to keep up with me at two or three maxed out. It was about two maxed out. And that was in the kind of 20s miles per hour and then getting up into three and four, 
my max speed I was able to comfortably do was uh, about 77 kilometers per hour. So, and that was with no one around, just uh, going as fast as I felt comfortable with. But it starts to feel like it's getting a bit away from you. So that was just first impression. Obviously, you get used to it, you get good at it, like any other bike. Uh, but it was really exciting. And first thing I want to do uh, now that I'm home is try and try and find the means to afford an e-bike. So I don't know when that'll happen, but want to buy one now. The, really fun. It was. Um, it rides just like a bike. It's just that the throttle on there being like a motorcycle throttle does make it a little bit different to handle. And you definitely need to be in attack position when you're learning it. I was a bit uh, over-exaggerated in that just to make sure I stay on the bike, stay in control, keep the wheel on the ground. The front wheel does lift up on its own pretty easily. The torque's really high. So once you start getting into like power level three or four, the front wheel will try to get off the ground. <laughs> Well, it's like a good orc looking. Either go for the number one or do nothing. <laughs> yeah, I it's guess, all I about guess you're right. Yeah, I guess you're good right. Good Everything or nothing. Made me nervous. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. But then you're going to turn it. Yeah, and sometimes if, if you lay it down around a corner, oh, you don't yeah. want that pedal side down oh, yeah, to make yeah, yeah. the right turn. Yeah. Okay. So what, starting? You can see I take the... So one's gonna be the slowest start. Yeah. Right. Just start off in one, see how right. it feels. Let go of the throttle, bump it to two, twist the throttle, bump it to three, twist the throttle. Okay. I'm happy with that. So, uh, 77 on the way back this way. Do so. you hear the regen? Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, the, the motor actually turns into a generator. It creates power instead of consuming it. And the biggest thing that I was starting to learn was, oh, it's, it's not binary. It's not... It's not full throttle or no throttle. You can go in the middle too, obviously. So anyway, I don't ride motorcycles. So that was kind of new to me. And um, Vince is very quick on it. And uh, it, was, it was fun to ride around. And unfortunately, the rain came and kicked us out a bit early. But I do feel like I need to buy one of my own now. So anyway, that, that was the experience. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Our thanks to Vince and Ilya, or Ten, for joining us on this. Andrew even tried to get on Ilya's bike, which was funny because he is not nearly as tall. Uh, but yeah, this was it was our it was our end of Computex. Let's let's go spend an hour doing something else for once, and it was it was fun. So hopefully we'll get to do more of this next year. I filmed some of my trail riding in Taipei as well. Don't know how good the footage is, but we'll try and look through that, see if it's usable, and upload it. If so, subscribe for more of this type of content. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.